off. Greetings games of the internet and welcome back to Heliophobia. Reportedly now part of a mentally challenged section on YouTube for daring to even utter anything about the Dr. Disrespect allegations. Which we're now going to talk about again. If you didn't know, on the 22nd of June 2024, I uploaded a video on allegations made against Herschel Beam, also known as Dr. Disrespect Online, a YouTube gaming streamer with over 4.7 million subscribers at the time of recording. These were mainly based on allegations made by former Twitch employee Cody Connors, who had reportedly implied that Twitch had seen messages between Dr to disrespect and a minor being made through the twitch whispers product yeah i don't know who uses that either and that following their inappropriate discussion they were going to meet up at twitchcon later on that year and thus twitch decided not to take any chances especially because i believe he was banned the year before or recording in the twitchcon toilet so this guy clearly wasn't composed even as a 36 year old with a wife and children the story was implicitly confirmed by other twitch employees such as partner manager at the time of doc's ban zachary diaz rod breslaw or slasher gaming journalist who had perpetuated most of the original allegations and even other streamers like destiny the doctor disrespect stuff um i feel like i've heard for so long people say that they were worried about like potential lawsuits or whatever but uh, i don't know why they ever felt that way i'm not sure if there's like some other part to that story yeah oh you're confirming this or is it all secondhand i don't know anything firsthand at all but i've heard people that should know about it firsthand talk about this for years years who obviously has way more contacts in the YouTube scene than I'll ever get. I mean, with the like ratios on my recent videos, I've got to ask uh, who, who got me. Uh, nobody got me. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that happened. Dr. Disrespect responded in two statements. One to Jake Lucky, but he said, quote, no wrongdoing was acknowledged, which is a lackadaisical legal term. And yeah, scratch that. Dr. Disrespect has literally just put out a response whilst I was recording. So I'll bring you some of the updates I was going to show you anyway. But first, I'll read this statement and then I'll give analysis. Posted at 7 p.m. UK time on June the 25th, 2024, Dr. Disrespect posted this on air. The Twitch ban. Hello, I'd like to make a quick statement. Let's cut the effing BS. As you know, there's no filter with me. I've always been upfront and real with you guys on anything I can be upfront about, and I'm always willing to accept responsibility, which is why I'm here now. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to everyone in my community, as well as those close to me, my team, and everyone at Midnight Society Game Studio. A lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with Midnight Society and I, and we made the painful decision collectively to have me step down. Our team is fully of incredibly talented and good people who have high career ambitions and family and I'd never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch, but for reasons outside of my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Now that two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations, I can now tell you my side of the story regarding the ban. Were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. These were casual mutual conversations which sometimes lean too much in the direction of being inappropriate but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened, no pictures were shared, no crimes were committed and I never even met the individual. I went through a lengthy arbitration regarding a civil dispute with Twitch and that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be clear, it was not a criminal case against me and no criminal charges have ever been brought against me. Now from a moral standpoint, I'll absolutely take responsibility. I never should have entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me as a husband and a adult and a father. It never should have happened. I get it. I'm not perfect and I'll effing own my own crap. This was stupid. Now with this all said, don't get it effing mistaken. I've seen all the remarks and labels being thrown around so loosely. Social media is a destruction zone. I'm no effing predator or pedophile. Are you kidding me? Anyone that truly knows me effing knows where I stand on those things with those types of people. Effer. That's a different level of disgust that I effing hate even hearing about. Don't be labeling me as the worst of the worst with your exaggerations. Get the eff out of here with that crap. <laughs> but I think I've said what I needed to to say regarding the ban itself that's it and that's why twitch made the decision in 2020 to my team community industry friends that have supported me i apologize i wish i could have said all of this sooner you guys have always showed me and my family love and support throughout all these years we love you guys like you can't imagine I have the best community and circle. If any of this has made you uncomfortable, I get it. You don't have to support me anymore, but just know that you have always been greatly appreciated. But trust me when I say this, all my haters that live and breathe social media with zero real life experience, I don't give an F about you. Oh, oh scary. Oh, 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 shiver my timbers. Finally, if you're uncomfortable with this entire statement and think that I'm a piece of ass, that's fine. But I'm not effing going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all these years ago. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family as mentioned on stream. And I'm coming back with a heavy weight off my shoulders. They want me to disappear. Yeah, effing right.
right. And yeah, there's a lot here to unpack. And I'll analyze this as one line by line. So firstly, now here he's saying that he's always willing to accept responsibility. And that probably does explain why all this time he's been saying that no wrongdoing was found. Instead of I never sent inappropriate messages to a minor. Because that would have been an effing lie. <laughs> Again, that's the same thing I was going to say. My original recording. And like I did say in the last video, it's parallel to companies like Microsoft. who will pay massive fines for breaking rules. To quote unquote settle the case and say they didn't commit any wrongdoing. Even though they almost certainly did do it. Next about the Midnight Society Game Studio stuff. Midnight Society is a game development studio founded by Dr. Disrespect. That is developing an extraction shooter known as Dead Drop. Which you can buy a $15 NFT to get access to the game with. You didn't know we were still shilling NFTs in 2024. But okay look, look as far as I'm aware the game isn't a scam. So I'm just gonna continue saying what I'm saying. And yeah on June the 24th. They made a statement basically saying that. Once they became aware of the allegations on Friday evening. Like everyone else did on the 22nd of June. They did an investigation as announced by the studio head Robert Bowling and they came to the conclusion that after they assumed he would assumed with a D it's a past tense his innocence from the beginning they spoke to parties involved and they were terminating their relationship with Dr. Disrespect immediately. That was a significant moment in relation to the allegations because this wasn't like some big brand or something trying to save face like Turtle Beach who removed all of Dr. Disrespect's merch at around the same time last night because people were definitely buying Dr. Disrespect headphone mics. This was different because this was a studio that Dr. Disrespect essentially founded and was one of the heads of and the game their marketing literally relied on his brand image to push sales so to drop him before any evidence was like publicly out there obviously riled up Dr. Disrespect fans and presumably would jeopardize the future of the game so for them to do that after quote unquote speaking to parties involved that was a significant intervention made that changed the whole course of like everything yet Dr. Disrespect on the same stream last night like an hour before this statement implied that he was just gonna leave on his own terms and he wasn't gonna speak any more about the allegations like he just did today for those that are looking for me to expand on this weekend not gonna i already said what i needed to say i don't give a f about this guy that's it so i do appreciate the donations i do appreciate the messages but i like to put it in the fifth gear right off the rip like i'm 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 actually tired of being on social media and i've and i've expressed that over the years champ so i just you know i've always kind of hinted like it'd be nice to get off and just completely separate, right? And I think I might just extend that starting today, starting now. <laughs> you know, one of these, let's take a step back. I mean, it is what it is. People get fatigued, right champs? And to be honest, I don't know how long, you know, I, I, I know where my vacacion, how long my vacation is, but you know, Maybe I extend that. Either have to relay this to the Midnight Society, but I, you know. Maybe I step away from there too. But the Midnight Society statement makes clear that it wasn't mutual, it was the fact that he was fired. And Bowling, right after the statement came out, did not make any comment on whether him leaving was mutual, but the tweet wasn't deleted and he made a statement saying, This is a statement from me personally. It does not reflect any of my companies and has not gone through any legal or PR approvals. If you inappropriately message a minor, I cannot work with you, period. I promise to only act on facts. And I did. Wow. And look, that's a fair enough statement, especially now that Dr. Disrespect has publicly admitted to when this happened. And he even gave a specific year. Next, the fact that he says now two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations, I can now say my side. So I'm assuming this does mean there was an NDA regarding the settlement, but now it has been breached by some of the individuals and parties involved. He is now at liberty to discuss it, or I assume that's at least how NDAs work. If one side breaks it, they become invalid. I'm not a legal expert, go watch it. Like Game Theory and their 10,000 researchers. Next, he obviously admits to using Twitch whispers to make inappropriate comments, which, you know, are old gun to head right now. But also, he says they're inappropriate, but again, we don't have access to the messages. But I feel now that Dr. Disrespect has admitted to everything, someone will leak it at some point. And on that Slatter and XQC have both publicly said there is a document with some level of proof surrounding all these allegations, which has been spreading around with streamers. Chat, chat. Some document, something tend. Okay, I'm not, guys, I know a bunch of information. Okay, no, a bunch of shit, okay, and I'm not saying shit, but just one thing, some document, something tangible, um, was like communicated like today to a bunch of people, uh, to some people, and it'll, it'll probably come out, um, 
super um sooner but the thing is we, we don't know the scale of inappropriateness it was again something i compared it to in my cringy opening skit in my last doctor disrespect video was the situation with yandere between september 2023 and january 2024 these rumors follow the unfortunate evictions of i'm alex and yandere earlier this year let's just hypothetically imagine i have an only fan I say these are similar parallels in the sense that inappropriate messages were sent between individuals on topics you shouldn't really be talking to minors about but there were like no inappropriate photos being exchanged between them and he was cooked for that and look if the inappropriateness of the messages were at least on that level this situation is still like multitudes worse because as you see he's admitted to most of the allegations so far and he says he quote never even met the individual yeah but that's completely different from how he reportedly planned to meet this individual at twitchcon the age of which I'm still not aware of and he never says he was misled either for all we know he could have been speaking to like a 14 or 15 year old and regardless of their age if they're a minor and you're a married 36 37 year old at the time especially with your own children you probably shouldn't be speaking like that to any child in any way even if they are 17 and then you just feign moral outrage and anger being like oh how dare you assume that about me uh well, we assume that because we literally saw you admit to doing it using the same excuses out of every chris hansen victim playbook i would have taken a shower and i would have a nice twitchcon fan meeting nothing else at all but look that again that is very specific wording he does not say oh i didn't intend to meet them he just says he didn't meet them which is factually true and since there were apparently three years between this and the ban it might have fell through for well, whatever reason and uh, yeah he also removed minor from his statement about messaging the quote-unquote individual before adding it back in the twitter edit because he has twitter premium after being criticized so yeah that's why all of this is worse than yandere death next he says there's a civil dispute between him and twitch because according to unverified documents, Twitch tried to not pay him due to quote unquote inappropriate behaviour unbefitting of the Twitch brand, which I guess the court didn't find enough of a convincing reason not for him to get paid. Although again, we still don't know if penalties were taken or anything out of the final amount he was paid. Because again, he never explicitly said in any of the statements that he made neither to Jake Lockie or the standalone statement he made after that the payment was in full. Again, he says, ah, oh, no criminal charges were ever brought against me and it was not a criminal case. Again, we can compare this to another parallel, uh, just in Royden. He was acquitted of domestic abuse claims against his wife, but he was dropped from his game studio Squanch Games and from Adult Swim, adult animated comedy Rick and Morty, based on inappropriate but also not illegal messages with underage children as well. Like we know he did it, there's screenshots and everything out there and that's why he hasn't been rehired in spite of no criminal charges being brought against him. So yeah, that's probably why he also says at the end of his statement that he doesn't mind if people are still disgusted, despite the fact that yesterday he didn't want to speak about it at all and was like, oh, I'm just going to take an infinite hiatus. Which again, he still reinforces at the end of his statement. And he says he's not going to disappear. You do never know, the guy looks a bit like John McAfee. And look, reading over it again, I do have several gripes with the statements he made towards the end. Mainly the fact that he's trying to be like, ah, oh, all these haters want to kill me, to destroy me. I mean, yes, to be completely fair, people even including Cody Connors, who originally published these allegations, he literally did say F Dr. Disrespect and his voice, which could be in reference to Nick Merckx and his controversial views and gender ideology that ended up actually getting him removed as a cosmetic in Call of Duty. So yeah, that's fair. But again, to paint it as if this is a cancel culture mob, as a dog whistle to your right wing fans, most notably people such as a quartering, to try and get them to stand with you no matter what, solely because you may not have committed a crime, just acted creepily. Again, that's just as politically manipulative. But again, this is also one of the reasons why I feel if YouTube doesn't terminate him for violating their community responsibility rules, which is essentially the blanket punishment they put on like any creator to demonetize them if they cause a mainstream media scandal about YouTube, I do genuinely think he might have somewhere to go to. Look, there are people who have succeeded, even in the wake of very serious allegations allegations like this against an individual due to like a strong right-wing anti-cancel culture fan base which I did experience myself when I made my first video on him. I was told I should have been personally sued for making the video. I was told my video was terrible without any reason given for why. I got called a clickbait channel trying to feed off drama. Like you saw in the intro I got called mentally challenged. That's some guy who insisted that I give him evidence that he's guilty solely because I dared to speak about the allegations and apparently it's illegal to report news now. Look, look that's the thing. Now use that tweet by Cody Connors 
this and basically gone for him being like oh this is obviously politically motivated and look even if it was it still doesn't minimize what the guy did that also probably cling to the fact that there's still no screenshots out at the time of recording and the fact he hasn't been criminally charged and thus he'll be able to move on with like a semblance of a fan base even if he's lost 30,000 subs at the time of recording and big influencers like cares high and kai Sina have disowned him i mean we've got people like sneeko literally making up the excuse that when he said why not he meant 17 years and 11 months <laughs> you don't know that too again it doesn't make it better because he had a wife and there's over a 20 year age gap at minimum and yeah although i could probably agree it's not like a 10 year old using twitch whispers the age was never disclosed he literally edited the statement to hide Viner, and yet he still wants to gun for him insisting it was a mutual relationship with someone who was about to turn like 18 the next day <laughs> like these guys are all being like way too charitable speaking on cody connor's though just to end i do really think that this is sort of relevant as well the main topic of this video was going to be before dr disrespect responded tweets were found from 2023 of him and slasher who was one of his friends using the allegations to like sell tickets to his band and in a response he basically said it was a joke around how everyone in the industry already knew which to be fair based on everything that people have been saying does seem like it's true but still if a situation is as described i really don't think you should be making jokes like that and there's also one other point i want to cover before i end this video with a conclusion that's about the privacy of twitch whispers especially because a bloomberg article released yesterday by cecilia the anastasia which reportedly was what forced dr disrespect to finally speak out because it corroborated the rumors with three current twitch employees as far as i'm aware as well as corroborating that this incident was also why he was banned from discord it basically said that dr disrespect was reported through the chat feature on twitch so yeah for everyone complaining about privacy first if you're using an amazon service and expecting privacy you're you're done but secondly it doesn't seem like they were like watching his messages 24 7 digging for something literally all social media has employees who can view private dms to review them if they've been specifically reported to them look obviously twitch whispers was retired last year and i have no idea how it worked but yeah, yeah i don't really think you should all be shocked anyway yeah that's the end of this video and the end of dr disrespect his career is like fully over now he's losing sponsors like the san francisco 49ers his friends like tim the tap man wow this is absolutely insane bro i have known doc for a while now we've played games for years if he knew that was a minor and those were the messages being sent i cannot support that there's large influencers like ksi and kaisena have all condemned him publicly and yeah as you can sort of tell this was definitely edited differently to all my previous videos i'm probably gonna take an infinite hiatus from youtube myself We'll take that break, bro. But uh, don't worry, there's like a 99% chance I'm coming back. Thinking about where I'm going to take this channel next. Meanwhile, you should take your finger to the subscribe button and also swipe through the description to find all my social medias, which are at Heliophobia and it has an underscore next slash Twitter. And love you, bye. <laughs>